watching New GHTV. I wanted to uh, announce another special guest of mine. I guess because how close we are, and uh, the, you know, I guess the magnitude of work that we do together, I didn't really recognize. I really want to uh, now pronounce so my good friend, Tad in the back, back there somewhere, UFC fighter, fresh out of the fight, got a couple scratches on Johnny McGowan. Let's yeah. get those kids up there. Uh, so with that said, I want to start bringing up our special guest. But first, we can have uh, Mr. GLC say a couple of words. Ian, please, as well. Very cool. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing this morning? All right. Good. That's what's happening. Uh, my name is GLC. I grew up in the city of Chicago. Uh, I, I came up in the Chicago public school system. And uh, ever since I was a kid, I had a dream to be an entertainer and uh, do something beyond what, the, what was considered normal. And when I told people that I wanted to rap and I wanted to entertain, everybody was looking at me like, oh man, you ain't gonna never make it, and this and that, you're from Chicago, how you gonna do that? But at the end of the day, I realized at an early age that the only limitations that I would have in life were those that I placed upon myself. And in my mind, as a kid, I felt like that I could do anything, and I could be anything that I wanted to be. So how many of you all in the room today feel that way about yourselves? By a round of applause. Because um, everything that is at one point was an idea, it may have been a dream or just a vision that someone may have, may have had before it actually manifested into reality. And often you may hear a saying where people say, hey, you can speak things into existence. How many of you all are familiar with that phrase? About a round of applause. That is partially true. You can partially, that's half of it. You can speak things into existence, but you still have to do the work that comes behind the words. Because if you're sitting down and you're saying, yo, I'm gonna be successful, I'm gonna be successful, I'm gonna be successful, but you're just sitting down on the couch saying it, and you're not putting any work towards making it possible or making it a reality, you're just gonna be a person on the couch for your whole life talking about, I'm gonna be successful, I'm gonna be successful, I'm gonna be successful. So I just wanna uh, really have you all focus on doing the work that comes behind the words, and you can be whatever it is in life that you want to be. Um, like I said, growing up in the Chicago public school system, you know, people, they say, like, I, I, travel, with, I travel on the road uh, quite often. Like, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. Uh, when I was eight months, I lost my father. He died of a heart attack. So that was like a, a huge blow. Then when I was 12 years old, uh, I lost my mom to cancer. And you know, losing both parents, people would be like, oh man, he might turn out kind of messed up or whatever. But I, as opposed to me giving in to the negative energy and letting it uh, take hold of my life and what I wanted to become, I used it as a positive because I didn't want my parents who could have avoided me. They could have like not been making love and didn't have me and I could not have been here, but they had me. So at the end of the day, I wanted to give them a legacy and not have them have their child in vain. I wanted to give them something to be proud of and something to stand up and be like, wow. So now, um, from that point, at, at the age of 12, I lost my mom. Then at 14, I was diagnosed with diabetes and I actually flatlined. I kind of like died and came back. I was only there for a few seconds, but it brought me back through the grace of God and my will to live and my will to survive. And at the age of 14, that's when I really knew that the only limitations I would ever have are those that I place upon myself because I could have been out of here, but I didn't give in to the fact that I could have been out of here. I just thought about constantly living and constantly getting out of my dreams. So I'm going to fast forward a bit to uh, 2004. 2004, after uh, almost dying and losing my parents and going through a, a slew of negativity and things that were going on in my neighborhood as far as losing friends to gang violence, uh, losing friends to drugs and things of that nature, that's when I decided that I would not become a product of my environment. As opposed to me becoming a product of my environment, I would focus on making my environment a product of me. And that stood with me giving out positive energy and having a positive attitude. And therefore, people begin to ask me, they say, yo, what inspires you? What gets get you going? And how do you uh, constantly continue to do great things? Well, the answer is, I'm inspired by being an inspiration. I realized that coming from the Chicago public school system, 
and then doing hardships, and then going on to uh, being signed to Kanye West and performing on two Grammy Award winning albums and winning two Grammys. After people told me that it wasn't going to happen, I felt like, man, there are no limitations in life. You can be whatever you want to be. So I want you all to adapt that philosophy and that ideology and understand that you have no limitations. And right now, people say that you all are the future, but I'm going to look at you all as a gift and you all are the present. And therefore, we need you to determine how we're going to be 10, 20 years uh, down the line. We're senior citizens and, you know, we, we, uh, we, we can't get around as well as we could. You all will be the decision makers and you will determine how great this world will be. You know, if we have hardships right now. We're going through, uh, you know, war and I promise that's not my fault. I promise it's not my fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going through war and we got, uh, you know, all, all the negative things that's going on in the world today. So we are depending on you all to step up and lead and make this a better place for everybody to enjoy and, uh, and I would say uh, be geared towards prosperity. How many of you all are ready to step up and take that challenge? By a round of applause. tell you all, I mean, I'm quite sure that your parents and your teachers and your community community leaders have instilled in you, but just take it from me, a young man that grew up on 87th Street that uh, endured many hardships in his life, but never lost sight of the vision. I tell you, like, life is like moving up a steep hill. Everybody wants to get to the top, but when you're trying to get to the top, it's not an easy climb. And when you're trying to get to the top, you have to eliminate the dead weight. Dead weight are people that uh, aren't on the same page as you are. Like if you're trying to be positive and productive in life and you're trying to gain things, do not be around people that are on uh, the opposite plane as you are because that is dead weight. And when you're carrying dead weight, man, that hall will be very, very, very uh, difficult to get up to that top, to that mountaintop. And I believe in you all and I know that you all will make it and you can make it and you will leave those that follow in behind you to prosperity. So i just like to say thank you all for coming out. Thank you all for believing in yourselves. And remember, the only limitations you'll ever have in life are those that you place upon yourself. And by a round of applause, how many of you all believe that you can do anything? Thank you. My name is DLC, and I thank you all very much, and I believe in you all as well. Thank you. What's happening, y'all? Man, you know, a lot of times you hear people telling you that you can't make it out of Chicago, that it's dark and that it's gloomy. But I'm standing right next to a perfect example that you really can. This is Victor Adeyanju from the Cincinnati Bengals, and he went to Curie High School. Tell the people about your involvement in the uh, Prevention Bowl. Uh, just coming back, you know, I'm born and raised in Chicago. I want to get back to the community, let the kids know that they're special. And, you know, it's a privilege and honor to be here, helping support a great cause. Oh man, that's a blessing, man. I think that it's wonderful to see brothers that have made it out of the community come back and give back and not just talk about it, but actually be about it, man. So we hold you up in the city of Chicago, man. Thanks Thank for coming out. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Already. Thanks, Vic. Already. How can your fans keep up with you? Do you have a Twitter or anything? <laughs> <laughs> or, or a website? Unfortunately, I had to get off Facebook and Twitter. Uh, it was a uh, comp conflict of interest, but uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm always around and, uh, you know, you guys could uh, come to the game. So Come to the game or go to the Cincinnati Bengals website, man, and you'll be in tune. Thanks for coming out, Victor. Thanks, Love, man. God bless. Right. Appreciate it. Love. UGTV, man. We're here at USA Lafield giving back to the youth. Love.